battle station operational. That's my battle station, by the way. Hey guys, that was probably very cool, but also nerdy, but it's not just Alexa services. I can use Android smart tiles or power menu tiles to put the computer back to sleep or wake up, depending on the circumstances. Apart from that, the project is also compatible with Google Assistant, Nodred, web interface, and pretty much anything you would like to use to wake up devices at home. So in this video, I'm going to show you two approaches to wake on LAN. So how to wake up your computer with a wake on LAN server and without. Let's start with a basic. To wake up computer remotely, you will need a compatible network card. It could be a Ethernet card, network card, or it could be a wireless if you've got a compatible wireless card that supports Wake on LAN or WOL. To enable this, there are a couple of menus that you have to visit. First of all, I would strongly recommend you to check on your BIOS. Some of the BIOSes will have setups for Wake on LAN, especially on laptops if your Wi-Fi card supports this. Now that you've checked this, navigate to Network Adapters and check the properties. You will notice there is a tab called Power Management and this is where you have to enable Wake on LAN and Wake on Packet or Magic Packet, which is important, otherwise your computer won't stay asleep. In addition to that, it's a good idea to take a look at advanced settings for your network card as there might be some extra related to Wake on LAN properties that you want to toggle. I'll split this tutorial into two parts. First, it's going to be a local Wake on LAN when you're not using Wake on LAN server. Second part, it's going to be with a Wake on LAN server, which is more robust and probably the way you want to go, especially if you're into home automation. But it's not just Wake on LAN. We, I'm going to show you how also put the computer to sleep remotely. So when you've finished working remotely on your computer or machine, you can just press the button on your mobile device or issue voice command and it will put your computer to sleep as well. And because both parts actually use the same system to put the computer to sleep, let's get started with that. Alexa, turn computer on. You'll need two things to put the computer to sleep. You'll need join app to intercept commands from your Android telephone and event ghost to execute a sleep upon receiving this command. Event ghost, you can think about it like a tasker for Windows or automation software for Windows machines, and it's pretty good. To make this work with event ghost, you will need auto remote plugin, and I'm gonna link how to install the auto remote plugin in my article, which is associated with this video. When command is sent, in this case, I'm being very creative with command, well, sleep. It simply puts the computer to sleep. It's very simple, very effective. And all you have to do to make it work is also add associated Chromium based extension that will intercept the commands from the Android telephone and well, send it to event ghost. And that's it. You're pretty much set for the sleep. So let's talk about wake on LAN and we're gonna start without the server. Now, the simplest approach is to use uh, Wake on LAN app. Now, the app is standalone, doesn't require anything else, and it'll give you a small green indicator when the device is online and will be able to issue a magic packet to wake up your computer. It is limiting because each time you'll have to tap on the button, you won't be able to use external voice commands, etc. etc. Et so, I probably would recommend you to jump into Tasker, especially that this particular app is available as a plugin for Tasker. First step is to download and set up this app. It will search for your PC and ask you for the IP and MAC address, and that way you will be able to send magic packets to this particular computer and only this device will wake up. In this video, I'm using power menus, which I created earlier in this video. They're very useful and very practical for the use case like this. If you don't have Android 11 device, power menu isn't supported. So you might rethink approach and use uh, maybe auto notification instead with a permanent notification instead of power menus. Once you import the project, it'll ask you for a couple of details. It'll ask you for DNS, just in case you want to use wake up call from uh, outside of your local network. It will ask you for your join name for the target device. 
and the target IP of the device you're going to wake up so we could ping it and obtain its status. You'll notice I've created a network manager. This is a very simple profile that will check if we are connected to a home Wi-Fi and if so, it will set the network to local, otherwise it will set the network to other. That way I can either use a DNS entry to send the packages through DNS. In that case, you'll have to forward port nine and seven to be able to send uh, wake up packages uh, through your router, but uh, that's a matter for another tutorial. Next up is the profile that pings this computer every 30 seconds and updates the local status so it would know whether the computer is online or offline. This is very helpful because my last profile waits for the command for, from power menu. Once tapped, it will send the command intercepted and then check the local status on my phone. If the, uh, the computer is online, it will put it to sleep using join action. Otherwise, it will send a wake up message either via local network or external network if I'm away from home. That simple. The disadvantage of this is that you have to write another routine for Alexa or Google Home devices and integrating it from outside of your local network requires a couple of workarounds in terms of pinging the device and obtaining the status. But those problems are non-existent if you switch to Wake on LAN server. So let's take a look at the implementation. There is a separate task a task that you have to import and this is basically the template power menu I've already created earlier. So other than setting up the initial tile, there is really nothing else to do. Once you run the setup task, all you have to do is really go and add that extra tile to your active rooster. This is something that Tasker is unable to do. And pretty much you're done with Tasker because everything else is taken care of by Node-RED. So let's jump into the Node-RED and talk about it in detail. Okay, you probably want to know what's going on in Node-RED. And that's the Node-RED section. Uh, instantly you'll notice that I split entire um, flow into four different uh, modules. Uh, those are module, like the name suggests, and there is a basic logic. So you have your power menu. Uh, you can ignore that uh, mappings of the link nodes. But we have your power menu, there is a logic, and there is a dashboard. So you can operate that from the dashboard and obviously smart speaker integration with Alexa and Google Home. And I'm going to explain everything. If you just want to deploy it and start playing with it, all you have to do is just go to settings, click on start, and you'll have all the settings explained to you. So you'll need uh, information for your uh, wake on LAN tile and information about the target device that you want to wake up to provide. Once you set it up, uh, everything should be working just fine. Now, the cool thing about this is because it's module, you don't actually have to use these. I could just remove that delete this section and it would not affect the other flows. So if you're not interested in smart speakers, you can delete the section. If you don't want the dashboard, you can delete the section. Obviously, logic is the part that you want to keep because it will uh, send correct commands. So you will send either wake on LAN or sleep commands to your computer and it will notify your devices whether um, the computer is online or offline by sending ping. So how it works, uh, it's a throwback, as I mentioned, to a power menu. So I'm using still the same system to get the information from um, my Node-RED server and update the tile on the Android device. And because I'm using a button, uh, you'll notice I've hooked it up to the first output, which is designed for the button. And that way, when the uh, information is being sent from the Android via join, it gets in here being passed over and triggers wake online or triggers uh, sleep command, depending on the current state. What I'm doing every time I send this, uh, two things that's going to happen. First, I'm going to have a delay. So that's going to uh, be ping. That's going to be issued 10 seconds later to check if the computer actually woke up. And I'm going to uh, obviously check what is the current state which is stored in a flow context. If I go to context, you'll notice that my uh, target right now is online. It's true in here. So if it's online, I'm going to put it to sleep. If it's offline, I'm going to wake it up. And that's why I'm able to do it with a button. I don't need to use a toggle for it. If you prefer to have a toggle, you're free to do so. Now, if you're interested in a dashboard, the dashboard looks like this. Let's uh, go and open this. 
It's a very simple dashboard that's just gonna keep the state of the computer itself. So you can see the computer is online and the button is here online. When I press it, it's gonna put the computer to sleep. I'm not going to do it because I'm actually recording this computer. So uh, that's the reason behind it. And lastly, we have integration with smart speakers via Alexa and smart Nora. Now, uh, the Alexa integration won't keep a true false status of it. It will just blindly either respond to your commands and send true false information to your computer. And the Google Home implementation with Smart Nora is uh, uh, a little bit better. So it will actually update your widget and display current information of your widget. It's uh, sent basically as a smart uh, socket information and you'll be able to tell directly from the widget if your computer is on or off. Now, to keep that information relevant, and you've noticed that my widget on Android device uh, always has a current uh, status of the computer, I send additional ping, which is being sent every 10 seconds. And when that happens, obviously I get a reply and update my tile on Android device, which you can see goes link out in here, preparing response and sending back to uh, the tasker. I guess you'll agree that this beautifully illustrates how flexible the DIY power menu is using Tasker. Now this is just a one of the showcases and I've got a couple of other coming, so if you're interested, bear in mind I do not have a posting schedule, so if you don't want to miss it, well, I think you know how YouTube works, so I don't have to tell you how to take advantage of the tools that YouTube provides. It's also a good idea to follow me on any given social media if you want to engage with me and submit your ideas for interesting home automation projects or reviews. So don't be a stranger and say hi. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!